This is part 135 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between the sequence object and identity property in SQL Server. This is continuation to part 134, so please watch part 134 before proceeding. Sequence object is similar to the identity property in the sense that it generates sequence of numeric values in an ascending order just like the identity property. However, there are several differences between the two which we will discuss in this video. Identity property is a table column property meaning it is tied to the table whereas the sequence object is a user defined database object and it's not tied to any specific table meaning its value can be shared by multiple tables. Look at the create table statement right here. This is creating employees table and look at this identity property. This is tied to the ID column of this table. Now look at this create sequence statement. This is creating a sequence object, but this is not tied to any specific table, meaning this sequence object can be shared across multiple tables. Now let's look at an example of sharing this sequence object with these two tables, customers and users. Notice both the tables have got ID column in them. Now what we want to do is use this sequence object right here to generate the values for the ID column in both the tables. And for that I have written five insert statements right here. The first two are for inserting values into customers table and these three are for inserting values into users table. And look at what we are supplying as the value for the ID column. We are using the next value for clause on the sequence object which is going to generate the next sequence value from that sequence object. So let's execute all these five insert statements and now let's select the data from both the tables to make sure the same sequence object is being shared by both of them. Look at the ID column values within the customers table 1 and 2 within the users table it's 3, 4 and 5. So this proves that the same sequence object is being shared by both these tables. Now to generate the next identity property value a row has to be physically inserted into the table whereas with the sequence object there is no need to insert a row into the table to generate the next sequence object value. You can simply use the next value for clause to generate the next sequence object value. So here we have the employees table and we have the identity property on the ID column. So if we have to generate the next identity value, we have to physically insert row into that employees table. You know, at that point when the row is inserted for the ID identity property, the value will be generated. Whereas if you want to generate the next value from the sequence object, you don't have to physically insert a row into the table. You simply can use next value for clause. So when I execute this query, we should get the next value from the sequence object. Maximum value for the identity property cannot be specified. The maximum value will be the maximum value of the corresponding column data type. So if you look at the identity property, this is defined on a column and that column has got a data type. So there is no way for us to specify what is going to be the maximum value for the identity property. The maximum value will be the maximum value of the data type. In this case, it will be the maximum value of the integer data type. Whereas with the sequence object, we can specify the maximum value using the max value option. Now, this max value option is optional. So if we don't specify um, that option, then the maximum value of the sequence object will behave like the maximum value of the identity property in the sense that it will use the maximum value of the data type of that sequence object. Identity property does not have any option to automatically restart the identity values. With a sequence object, we can use the cycle option to specify whether the sequence should restart automatically when the maximum value for an incrementing sequence object is reached or when minimum value for decrementing sequence object is reached. So let's quickly look at that example. So if you look at the create sequence statement right here, notice we're using the cycle option. So we are starting with one, incrementing by one, and the max value is going to be 5. So when the max value is reached, since we have used the cycle option, it's automatically going to restart at the minimum value that is 1. So let's drop the sequence object that we already have 
and let's create this sequence object with this cycle option and look at what's going to happen as we reach the maximum value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that's the maximum value now when I ask for the next value again look at that it automatically restarts at the minimum value we don't have that kind of an option with the identity property so here are some of the differences between the two that is the identity property and the sequence object thank you for listening and have a great day